today, we're gonna build a belt grinder. So here's what we got to work with. I remember when I moved into this new shop, I discovered all my treasures that I've been hiding for a while. And some of them were these leftover belts from my other belt sander that I use here in the shop. Racing slicks off go-karts, a five horsepower Baldor motor, three phase, a mill drill attachment or a drill press attachment, some plates and some go-kart hubs that go with the uh, wheels here. These are some Dunlop cart racing tires. The size, if anybody's interested, is 11 and a half times seven by 10 by six. So they're really light. We'll actually, we'll put them on the scale. These are things don't weigh more than a couple pounds. The diameter is 10, I think I measured it's 10 and a half inches, which is really gonna keep my surface speed up on this belt grinder, which is what I'm after. What's awesome is they already come with these hubs and they already got holes drilled. It's, this is like these wheels were made to be put on a belt grinder. I think it's gonna be awesome. I'm curious to see how well it works. I wanna put it next to the bandsaw so that any part that comes off the bandsaw can literally be deburring as parts are being chopped off, make my time more efficient. I'm gonna to try to use all the material I have here in the shop and try not to outsource anything. There are gonna be some things I think we're gonna to have to purchase. But for the majority of the stuff, we're, I'm gonna to try to build in house. I've been saving this plate for something special, and I think this grinder is just the right ticket. It's mild steel plate, one inch is thick. Is it one inch thick? Inch and an eighth by 27 inches. This plate's gonna define the size and shape of this belt grinder. I wanna build this nice and heavy so that the grinder doesn't move when you're pushing on and pulling on it. This plate just makes sense because I have it, and two, it's nice and heavy duty, just the way I like to build things. Here's the main frame for the belt grinder that we're gonna be using. This is an inch and an eighth plate. The shoot is written right there on the stupid thing. So I want this belt grinder to be freestanding next to the bandsaw. This is the upper wheel. The upper wheel is gonna be, uh, we're gonna turn a spindle that comes off for the wheel to ride on. It's gonna be fixed. This radius is for me to be able to put a, a fender over the wheel so that I don't get sparks in my eyeballs. Platen will come inside here. This is so I can get some tools around the edge of the side of the belt. This is a slot for an adjustable angle table that we'll be fabricating. This is the hole for the motor shaft to poke through the side. We still have to build a motor mount and a way for tracking and belt tension and a base so that this thing will freestand by itself. The next step to get this thing going is we're gonna, I'm gonna stand it up and we're gonna build, build a base for it so it's freestanding and then we'll just keep trucking along. I'm glad I have the plate because I like to build things heavy and I don't want any vibration in this belt design. So this is kind of fun to get to design as we go. This space right here that's left open is gonna be for a bucket or a container of some sort to hold some water and you also use it as a quench tank. But first I'm gonna tack this square and 90 to the frame with the mega square and we'll build from there. Here's the plan for driving the belt. We're gonna make an adapter, a hub adapter, and we're gonna attach it right to the shaft so it'll be driven something like that off the motor, direct drive. A motor mount, this is beefy, this is way overkill, but the best material to use is the material you already have. We've got three quarter inch plate and then an inch and an eighth plate, and the motor is gonna sit something like this. This one's got some adjustability in and out with these slots. The motor is gonna attach to this plate. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna attach this spring, which is just a piece of two and three quarter wide, quarter inch, hot rolled, pickle and oiled plate with some 5 16 holes, uh, water cut into it, 
And we're gonna physically attach these two plates together with this. So they're gonna have a spacing and we're going to drill and tap into the face of these plates. Now in order to make this act like a spring, we're gonna machine a five degree, five or six degree angle into the face of one of these plates so that it actually sits preloaded kind of at an angle, okay? There'll be a bolt that sticks through here, much like this, and we're gonna push and be able to pry with this spring, this, this flexure spring, and we're gonna be able to track the belt with this. On the base base plate, we will make some hinges and we will hinge it so that the hinging motion is gonna take care of the belt tension. And I think just the gravity alone of how much the motor weighs, the base plates and everything, that's all we're gonna need for belt tension. The next thing to do is machine uh, the tapped holes for this and the match and a five degree angle five or six degree angle to give us some preload on the spring. I was gonna use the Acer knee mill to do this, but the vise is too small. But wouldn't you know, the Cincinnati Shaper has a giant vise on it to be able to hold this part, which makes the Shaper the perfect tool for the job. Here's the setup we got going on on the Shaper. We're gonna cut this a five degree angle on the face of this, but after doing that, setting it to five degrees over here, it looked way too steep. So I adjusted it to two, and we're just gonna run the tool head down manually at this angle and cut the edge of this plate off. I set the plate up to be drilled at two degrees. The Acer mill makes this little job pretty simple. A little tram tram, drill drill, tap tap. The next step is to put this motor support or a rib in between the frame and the base plate. It gets put in somewhere in here, I haven't quite decided yet where it's gonna go. But uh, we're gonna weld these hinges and they're just basically, is a shoulder bolt that has a board, precision board hole in it. This is an inch and a quarter diameter round and this is a nice good slip fit. And about two thousandths clearance in there. And then the shoulder bolt, what happens is it threads into this threaded nut and it gets bottomed out just like that so you can tighten it up as hard as you can. But when you do that, bottom that up, this still spins so it gives us our hinging action. So the next step is we're gonna weld these on here and same for on the motor mount. We'll set this up on the fixture table to do that. So let's get these hinges welded on.
We have everything tacked in here. We got the main motor mount support tacked to the base. The main structure is all just all tacked together, okay? But one of my favorite things so far is this flexure uh, motor mount. So here's how this is gonna work. You can see it's on a floating hinge. So I'll be able to build some sort of rod to be able to pick the motor up and slack the belt, put a new belt on and, and let the motor wait, put the tension in the belt. And then this is the belt tracker. Uh, this will actually be, we're gonna make this on the lathe, but we're gonna turn a rod and we're gonna have it up here above the motor with a cool handle on it. And this is gonna push the motor in a different axes so that we can track the belt. I want to do something that I've never done before. And I would like to give away one of my favorite tools of all time is my cast iron mega square. This is the one we used in the video here. What I want you guys to do in the comments below is guess what this whole assembly weighs. Motor, motor mount, the whole setup just like it is. And then in the next episode, we will reveal how much it weighs and the closest person, price is the right style to the weight without going over, I'll send you this mega square that we used in the video. In one week, we'll state the winner who came the closest. Remember, the closest to the weight of this whole assembly without going over gets the mega square and we'll ship it to you anywhere in the world. So please post your comments below. I think this will be fun. I'm curious at what this assembly weighs. I know this thing's extremely overbuilt, but that's part of the fun, just building it with scrap here in the shop. So I'm as curious as you are, but we'll find out what it weighs in the next video. So place your guesses down below. Stay tuned for the next episode to put some wheels and axles and spindles and platens. We got a whole bunch of fun stuff to do next. So we'll save that for the next episode. Please subscribe if you aren't already and I'll catch you on the next one.